Uh, my name is Sarah Wooten. I am a veterinarian, a small animal veterinarian. I graduated from UC Davis School of Veterinary Medicine in 2002. 16 years of clinical practice with dogs and cats. Um, I am also a certified veterinary journalist, so I had to go through a bunch of tests in order to bring good, val valuable knowledge to you. And um, that's about it. Um, something that most people don't know about me is that I enjoy scuba diving and for my 40th birthday I dove on a shipwreck in the Bahamas surrounded by sharks by myself. So I, uh, when I was growing up, I was either going to become Indiana Jones or a veterinarian. And I thought maybe an Indiana Jones wouldn't be good for raising kids. <laughs> and of course I loved animals and I had, a, I had animals growing up and I always really respected the veterinarian. I thought he was a superhero and that he could do just about anything. And I really wanted to be like him. So that's why. So I think what inspires me most about being a veterinarian is having the privilege of being able to facilitate the human animal bond because there is something special that happens between humans and animals and to be able to help people understand their animals better or be able to live a healthier life not only for their pets but for them that feels like I'm actually making a difference and that inspires me every day. The most challenging thing is when an animal needs health care and the pet parent is unable to afford the treatment and you can tell that they are struggling so much that they want to provide the best care for their pet and then there's the shame of not having the money and then the veterinarian not being able to practice the medicine that they know they could or be able to save animals that they think they could. That is heartbreaking to me and that is definitely something that needs to be solved within our industry. As far as solving this problem, yeah, there's um, one of the best solutions is pet health insurance. It is relatively inexpensive, uh, especially if you start young. Um, there is several different companies out there that are doing great jobs in the states because when it comes down to it, Pet care is, pet health care is expensive as far as out of pocket, but compared to human health care, it's super cheap, right? So, you know, maybe 5000 for a hip surgery versus 50000 And so insurance companies are like, yeah, I can, I can handle that. So insurance, 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 and also starting when they're young and doing things to promote health and wellness on the front end, keeping your dog thin, super, super important. So those are my two things. So the first dog um, I ever owned myself uh, was actually as an adult. Um, she is a golden doodle. I actually still have her. So I, I grew up with pets and I inherited a fur baby when I got married. Uh, but the first dog I actually went out and chose and brought home into my family was Alma and she is a seven year old golden doodle. The best way to make a visit to uh, the veterinarian stress-free is to make it as positive as possible. So if you are, if you have a puppy, um, you want to start with a happy visits. You want to start taking that puppy in so that that puppy can get handled by the veterinary staff, can receive lots of treats and praise and positive affirmations, um, and just have a really positive experience. No, no bad things. No, no vaccines. No blood draws. No fecal loops, not any fecal loops, but just happy. And then, you know, bring them in like a couple of times a week. Just make that part of your um, socialization for that puppy. That way the puppy builds an, a bridge in his or her mind that seeing the veterinary hospital means good things are going to happen and that will make it stress-free for everyone. Uh, if you have an older dog, um, you're going to have, and that dog already has some baggage associated with veterinarians, you're going to have to go more slowly and maybe work with a trainer. But the more you can build positive associations with that dog, seeing and smelling and experiencing the veterinary hospital, the easier the visits are going to go both for you, but also for your pet and for the veterinarian as well. How often you should bring your dog in really depends on your dog. So if you have a puppy, you're going to be in to see that veterinarian once a month or more often for, you know, up to four months. 
if you have a normal, healthy dog that doesn't have any issues, that dog can often just see the veterinarian once a year unless you are seeing something that is concerning. Um, and then that dog will go in once a year and get all the wellness checks and all that stuff. If you have an older dog or you have a dog with some health challenges, then you are going to be in to see that veterinarian more often. Um, for anything from weight checks to blood draws to whatever. So it really varies on the age and the health of the dog. So talk with your veterinarian and see what they recommend um, for your particular dog. My most memorable patient uh, was a French bulldog named Pat. And Pat came in uh, because of just wellness checks. And I didn't know anything about Pat. And when I went to do my exam on Pat, I got back to the, um, the parts that define whether a dog is a male or female. And I, I looked and I was like, what, 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 is, what, what is this? And the owner was like, it's a vaginus. Yes, Pat is a hermaphrodite. So I, <laughs> I thought, and you guys named the dog Pat. It's perfect. <laughs> Hi there, my name is Dr. Sarah Wooten and I want to invite you to join me on November 16th and 17th for an online virtual training, an online conference called Dog Care on Air. And there will be presenters just like me uh, and me. Uh, we will be bringing you uh, helpful information that you can use to have the best health and wellness for your pet. Uh, so I invite you to join me and we'll see you then.